And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Flying Fish Water Balloons. This is a three-dimensional fish just like you see here and we're going to soak them in water afterwards and use them like water balloons. Let me tell you why. Hi, this is Jeannie. You know me. I'm Mikey's assistant over at the Crochet Crowd. I've been making some fun things for the summer for my granddaughters here. And we made crocheted water balloons. Do you believe this? Wait till you see them. We're gonna put them in the water. Yeah, you guys fine. Okay, let's put them all in the water. Okay. Put them all in the bucket of water. Yeah, it's kinda cold. Let's push it. Let's put them in. Let's get lots of water. So the big craze this summer of 2017 is water balloons using Bernat Blanket yarn and I'll show you that yarn in just a moment. And the reason why it's such a big craze is that you can soak these things and they just absorb a lot of water. They make for very fun balloon toss. And the nice thing about it too is that because it's made with yarn you don't have a choking hazard of any kind of rubber from actual water balloons breaking and you also don't have the rubber hitting somebody's skin so hard. So it's a really nice idea in order to play so you don't end up with the choking hazard with the, any broken rubbers or any broken balloons that are left over and it's just really great. So when you're done with your game you can just uh, wring these out. So just wring it out and then just uh, hang it up to dry or you can just toss it in the washing machine if they got dirty at all and then just toss them in the dryer. So if you're gonna toss them right from the play to the dryer just make sure you wring them out the best you can and then just toss in the dryer. So this is a really kind of a neat idea. This is a pattern by our assistant Laura Jean and she came up with the pattern create with wings and and uh, flying fish we kind of had a lot of fun naming the names and this is what it looks like. So once it absorbs with water almost turns into a puffer fish and then becomes a really fun game of play. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So here is the Bernat Blanket yarn. One big ball like this. This is a 300 gram, a 10 and a half ounce. One big ball can make seven of these fish. So it actually goes a long way if you would like to play along. So it's kind of neat. You can make different colors and you can find great yarn like this with multi colors to make it even more fun. So you'll need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today. Some Bernat Blanket yarn and let's get going and get you started. It's a pretty easy pattern right from start to finish. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot using our six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today and Bernat Blanket yarn. So we're going to then chain three. So one, two and three. So this is the front face of the fish. So it's the mouth. So we want to go to third chain from the hook. So one, two and three which is the starting chain and I want you to double crochet a total of five times into that same chain. So let's count those out together. So this is one and two and continue. That is three and this is four, five. So I have my five double crochets in now and now with the chaining that I skipped over that includes one. So there should be a total of six of these posts. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So with the chain three and the five gives you a total of six and I want you just once you get that done just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain area where you had started which is pulling through and through. And that is the start of it and I want you to flip it so that the middle is facing towards you. So just flip it if you have to do inside out just like so and so then it's facing towards you. So let's begin round number two. So in round number two we're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and we're gonna go into the same one that we did the join and we're gonna double crochet once more. So in the six that are the five that you have left there will be two double crochets in each one of the stitches going all the way around. So go one and two into the next stitch and then do it again it's just double crochet into the next one. So there will be two in this one too and then do it again in the next one. So this is technically the fourth one out of six just so you're aware of that. 
and the fifth one is next. There was only six uh, stitches in the last round so there's only a total of six. So and then the last one here is gonna have two. So there should be six groups of two when you count them all the way around. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Once you have that done then just tuck in the uh, loose tail. You can just put that in the inside the fish. It'll be there forever and then just slip stitch it to the top of the chain three and conclude that round. So this is round number two. So for round number three we're going to chain up three and in the same one you did the join you're going to put in another double crochet in. So here's the thing with number three. Every stitch is gonna get two double crochets in it. So you're gonna double the diameter or diameter or the perimeter of it by putting two into each one. So please do that all the way around for round number three and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm finishing up round number three. So round number three then it was two into each one. You're gonna join it to the top of the first chain three. So there should be 12 groups of two going all the way around. So you should be able to count each of the groups. Round number four is now making the fin and the side fins. So the top fin and the side fins all together at the same time. When we do the side fins we're gonna concentrate on one of the loops only. So let's just quickly review that. So in crochet when there's two strands it's considered one stitch. But if you go in the one stitch, the one strand that's closest to you this is called the front loop and if you go into the other one that's in behind it's the back loop but together they're called a stitch. So we're gonna be concentrating that here on round number four. So let's begin that. So let's begin round number four. We're gonna chain up one and then in the same one you did the join you're going to single crochet. So I want you to single crochet into each of the next ten stitches that you have. So just keep moving along. So let's count those out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Just like that. So now we're going to do the first side fin. So what we have to do as I talked about before is that we have to go into the front loop only. So together they make up one stitch. If I go into the front loop only the front strand it's front loop and if I go into the back one it's the back loop. So we're gonna go into the front loop this time because next time we're gonna go into the back loop. So we're just saving that extra stitch on the uh, extra strand on the other side to use it as a, as a key base. So to begin we're going to go into the next one into the front loop only and pull through and through. That's just a slip stitch and I want you to chain three. So one, two, and three and now I'm going to treble into that same front loop. So you have to wrap that hook twice to do a treble and into the same loop. So you're just gonna treble. Okay so it's just an extra one and I want to do um, a total of three trebles, four trebles all together. So this is two, this is three, see and then I got one more. But we're not quite done and the reason for it is that we're on the end of the fin and we should be back on the body. So to get back down there we have to chain three. So one, two, and three and coming to that same front loop I want you to slip stitch again. So there's a lot all going in that one front loop and then you get a nice little fin, right? So now come into the next stitch. I want you to go into the next four for a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and four. And now we're gonna do a pico. So a pico is like creating an extra little nub on it and this is just the image of the top of the fin. So to do that we're going to chain up three. So one, two, and three and slide your hook into the stitch going straight down and across. Do you see how it looks like a V shape? Okay so just straight in and yarning over it and pulling it through and through and that is a pico. So it creates that little nub on the top and I want you to single crochet the next four in a row. So one, two, three, and four. So the next one will be the other side of the fin. So think about this as the mouth. So let's to do that we're gonna go in the front loop only and we're gonna slip stitch. So pull through and through and chain three. So one, two, and three and treble four times again into that front loop only. 
So I'm gonna speed up a little bit because I've already showed you how to do this. Once you have your four trebles in, again you're at the top of the fin or edge of the fin and you wanna come back down to the body so you're gonna chain three. So one, two and three and coming into that same front loop just slip stitch. And all I want you to do now is that your next two stitches are left and then you're back to where you had started. So I want you to single crochet into the final two stitches. So one and two and then just join it to the beginning single crochet that you had started with. So now at this point you can see the top of the fin. You can see the two fins on both sides. So let's continue on to the next round, round number five. So round number five we're going to return to double crochet. So chain up three and you're gonna put in one double crochet. So that counts as the first one. So you're gonna come to the next one and you're gonna do one double crochet in each stitch going all the way. So the one fin area or the two fin areas are using the front loops of the last uh, row that we were just playing. So this time when you go to double crochet you wanna go into the back loops of that same round. And this will make sure that the fins stay nice and projected and forward. So you, I'm not really counting, I'm just doing one double crochet in each all the way around. Okay, so here we go. And the next one is the part of the fin. So just come back to the back side and go into the back loop only. You might have to look for it. Okay, so it's the, it's kind of like right in the middle where you see where it's all kind of semicircled. It's right in the middle and you're gonna double crochet that one and then just jump right over it and then just start double crocheting into the other stitches all the way around. Now when you get to the top of the pico, which will be just a moment, okay, you wanna kinda push that pico out of the way. So just kinda coming into the front stitch only. And then once I just push it out of, out of the way and forward and then just kinda go in behind it. Okay, and you're just double crocheting. Because this is a, a something that you're not wearing, you can always improvise at any point as well. So you can see you kinda got it nice and solid and you're continuing to go and I'm about to hit that other fin on the other side. So where are we gonna go? We're gonna move that forward and look for, see the semicircle? We're gonna just go right into the middle of it. That's the back loop. And then just keep on moving around. Now there's nothing left on the way back around so you're just gonna continue just to double crochet right into the very end and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. So even if you're off by a stitch or two, it really doesn't matter because it works out pretty good but that's what it looks like at this point. So let's move along to your next round. So in the next round what we're going to do is that we're gonna start making it narrow again. We're gonna come, so we're at the maximum width of the body and now we're gonna come shorter. So we're gonna chain up two and we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. Now when you do that, it, because it should have been technically a chain three, this makes two together. It makes it like it's together as one stitch. So all the rest of the stitches are gonna be two together. So you're just gonna wrap the hook and going into the next stitch, pull through and pull through two and hold it. Then you'll go into the next one doing the same thing. So wrap in, pull through, pull through two and hold it. You will end up with three loops on the hook, pull through all three and those two just became one. So you will do that with every one of the groups of two as you go all the way around like that. So please do that for this round and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming into the very last one here to put those two together and then all I'm just going to do, whoops sorry I'm not actually all the way there. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself here. Just kinda watch where all the stitches are going. And the nice thing about it is that you can screw something like this up easily and still get away with it because of its application. Not giving excuses, just saying. So I'm going to join it to the top of the first double crochet that I started with. And so you can see that the body now is coming back down and coming more to a bowl shape. So we're gonna do the last round here and we're going to chain up two. We're gonna do a double crochet two together again. So just come into the next one with a full double crochet. So the chain two plus a full double crochet equals one. And then you're gonna do the next groups of two being two together and you'll do that all the way around once again and you will be left with a small hole 
at the back of the body of this fish. So it doesn't take long to get around to the end. I might as well keep you here and keep on going. Once you get the habit of this pattern I think that you can blast through pretty quickly. I blasted through during the testing as well for Laura Jean's pattern. So I'm coming all the way back around. The holes are getting smaller and smaller and I finally got my final two. Pull through and then I'm just going to join it to the top of the first double crochet and I've ended up with a small hole that's at the back. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we want to fold this in a certain way so that we can do the back fin. Let's show you that in a sec. So now we're gonna do the fin but we have to prepare the back end of it. So we have a hole in the back and I'm just gonna pull this out just a little bit and I wanna fold this in a way that makes sense. So I'm gonna fold it so that the fins are lined up. So just look at it from the front down. You can see the top and just fold it in a way that makes sense. So make sure you take care with that. And now we're going to put the needle or the hook back in and pull it tight. So with my hook I wanna get four single crochets across this. There may not be space for four. So you're gonna have to improvise. So chain up one and then just going straight across from the front going right through to the back. I want you to single crochet that one and I found that if I put two into the next one it's kind of like the middle of the fish. Put two into there and then just put one into the final. And so then you have your four. So this should be facing straight up and down so that it keeps your fish and fin in line. Let's begin round up our row number one. So let's turn our work and begin row number one. So the fin is actually done in two parts. This is part one. So I need you to chain up a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And second chain from the hook I want you to single crochet yourself all the way back to where you were. There will be a total of seven single crochets if you wanna count it. That's up to you or just eye it out. It's up to you. You'll run out of stitches anyway so either way it'll be very close. So you just single crochet yourself back across that chain and right back down to the body. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I should have seven and then once I have that I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that I had. And now I'm gonna turn my work. I'm going to chain up one and I'm going to single crochet back across this five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm gonna turn my work and just do the, the five again. So chain up one and single crochet five. One, two, three, four, and five. So you will end up with a pointy longer end and a shorter end and I want you to slip stitch this to the second single crochet. So you've been on the first one of this whole time. So slip stitch it to the second then that's it. So what I want you to do is leave an extra long tail and we're going to fasten that in later. So just snip it and we'll fasten that in with the darning needle in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do the second side of the fin. So this is kind of like the top half as you see it right now but we have to do the bottom half next and let's begin to do that. So let's turn our fish. So I wanna turn it so that this one is facing down uh, towards me. So this is the top of the fish here. It's still kind of flat. Once it fills up with water it will fill up really quite nicely. And I want you to grab the yarn and leaving a little bit of an extra long yarn tail that you can use to hide in the loose ends later is just attach it to your hook and you have two remaining single crochets. You wanna come into the first one. So there will be one and two. So come into the first one closest to the outside of the fish. Okay and attach it with a slip stitch and chain up a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then what I want you to do second chain from the hook single crochet yourself all the way back. So there's a total of seven. So I'll count it this time. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven is next. 
and once I get my seventh in I want to slip stitch it to the same one that I attached it to. So just pull through and through and now I'm gonna come back up that one. So chain up one and I want to single crochet the next five. So one, two, three, four and five and I want to turn it. So turn it around one more time. So chain one and go across the five. So one, two, three, four and five. And we're not quite done yet. Once you get your five in there I want you to then to slip stitch then to that last single crochet that's there. It's right here in between if you pull it apart. So just slip stitch there and then leave an extra long tail and I'll show you how to weave in your ends in just a moment. So snip that out and we're gonna have some tails to get rid of in just a moment. So pardon my pun with the fishtail. <laughs> just thought of that. So there you go. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. You can see that this is the top of the fish. You have your fin up and down and let's show you how to weave in your ends. So here we are with the darning needle. I got it on here already and all I'm just gonna do is that I'm just gonna drag the yarn underneath because it's fluffy yarn you can get away with it. So you're gonna go one and drag it across, pull it through and then coming back in the other direction for two and then finally in the other direction for three. So the secret is is to go in and out of your ends three times in order to make this work just like this. And then once you have that in three times you can safely cut it right down and you will never have any loose ends hanging out. And you're gonna do that with all, all of your tails that you have left if you had one at the front and ju just do that as well. So just for fun what I decided for myself and let me back out the camera and just uh, highlight this for you. So I decided just to use some purple uh, yarn here and I just embroidered on an eye and I did it and I did it on both sides so it's e even and when I did so I went right through the project so that this kind of holding it together right here. So this is kind of what it would look like. So once you get it done then you can just shape it. Okay and once it gets wet anyway it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, it can be really quite cool and you just have to weave in your ends and have a really good time with these uh, crochet um, flying fish water balloons and I think that you'll have a lot of fun with this. It's nice and family friendly. You can get seven of these fish out of one break Bernat ball and I think you'll have a great time doing it as well. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.